Hello, welcome to another edition of Crop Life Retail Week. I'm Eric Sfulagoy, editor of Crop Life and Crop Life Iron Magazines, here again with Laura Sawinski. Laura, how are you doing today? Good morning. I'm fine. Thank you. How are you? I'm good. I'm, ba- I'm guessing, considering you have your fan going furiously in the background and mine is stationary, that it is a little warmer in El Paso than it is in Cleveland today. So, Yeah, I just realized the fan blades were spinning. It looks like one of those old, you know, black and white movies where they're interrogating the... <laughs> Or or the or the real speed is a little off kilter with the camera speed, yeah. Uh yes, yeah. so that's okay. That's all right. Hopefully not too distracting. <laughs> no, we're all good. Yeah. So hey, uh, of course, if I as I've teased many times on recent videos, I have been on the road an inordinate number of times. And I've been trying to keep up with all the events and places I've seen and share with our viewers, but uh, last week, I gave a little hint of what went on at the uh, Mid-America Crop Life Association annual meeting in Indianapolis in early September. Um, but this week, I wanted to share a little more detail, and I think you'll appreciate some of it. Uh, that They had a couple of speakers at that event. Uh, I guess about 100 people attended, give or take. Um, they had Steve Lurch from Story Arc Consulting, who was talking about understanding and influence and in modern consumers. Uh, Also had a work-life coach uh, there, Casey Boley, or Bol, uh, and she was talking about how to balance out work, family, and one's career. That was very, very interesting topics, those. Of course, this was the 12th year for the Young Leader Scholarship Program that MACA and its members sponsor. There were nine students, and that was a great to hear from them was a great way to hear from folks who, I guess, you know, in a couple of years, they're going to be in the industry. They're going to be the people out in the fields helping the grower customers to, uh, you know, make better decisions and pick the correct products for their for their crops. And uh, it was it's it was nice to hear their perspectives on the future. But I guess for me, the highlight of the meeting was the panel discussion and that ended the meeting. There were three members of that panel. They were talking about what's different. And uh, it was Ben Kaler from Corteva, Kurt mm-hmm. Coffey from Case IH, and Rob Clayton from Nutrient Ag Solutions, who I believe you know. Yeah, I had the opportunity to um, sit down with Rob um, a couple, three weeks ago and um, interview him as part of our Crop Life October cover story on national ag re- retailers. So, yeah, our Australian friend at yes, Maine. yes, yeah. Australian. Yeah, he had a very nice accent. Yes. Made the case that he was from a more southern place than anyone else in the room, and no one argued, obviously. Um, <laughs> but, but again, these three individuals. Again, they were talking about what's different, and again, they were focusing on agriculture, and they talked a lot about technology and market challenges to crop protection products from various sources. And um, But one of the things they did talk about at length was labor, the labor situation. Um, all three mentioned how much of a problem finding and retaining good employees has been. And interestingly, um, they, they made the point, Kurt and Rob in particular made the point that, you know, with ag technology improving and advancing as quickly as it has that, that, you know, basically, you know, we're going to be looking for folks to get into the agricultural marketplace for labor that are very tech savvy and that you're going to be competing with not just, you know, maybe the, the local automotive factory in town that could pay more than you could, as an ag retailer or an agricultural company, but you're going to be competing with the folks like Google and Yahoo and Microsoft to get some of these tech savvy people to consider agriculture as a as a career choice going forward. Um, but Rob made the point that he, you know, Rob Clayton made the point that you know, in our industry, we have a little an advantage because again, with you know, everybody keeps talking about the millennials and Gen Z and how they really want to try to do something that quote unquote makes a difference in the world. Mm -hmm. And Rob pointed out that really, if you look at industries and possible career paths, the only two industries in the world that could uh, offer that opportunity to this, this crowd of up and coming workers 
our medicine, because again, you're helping people get better and improve their health and mm -hmm. agriculture, because you're helping to feed the world and make sure as the population grows that everyone has enough food on their table and in their stomachs. So um, I thought that was a real important point to make. So it was, in fact, I'm, I'm glad he mentioned that on the panel, because when I was talking with him, that was one thing we actually spent a fair amount of time on um, labor and being an employer of choice. How do you attract, you know, these young kids, as you mentioned, that have, gosh, you know, we could work for Google, we could work for Facebook, we could, you know, um, and that was exactly what he said. In fact, he mentioned even his own daughter because she feels so strongly about wanting to make a difference in the world with her career and what she pursues that she's going into ag for um, just just because of that. So yep. that's great. I'm glad I'm glad he he mentioned that. I think that's a, a good message to get out because um, you know we we know that labor is a big issue, a longstanding issue. So there's kind of a, a very bright side to it. So that's cool. Yeah, but again, promoting, you know, basically promoting the fact that, hey, agriculture makes a difference in the world. Um, you know, I think that is a very, very positive message to reinforce to a potential workforce or mm -hmm. someone who's thinking, you know, what do I do with my life career wise? Yeah. You know, I, I, I agree with Rob 100 percent. That is a great message. I think all ag companies should adopt that similar approach as they're recruiting people going forward. So, yeah, that's great. Yeah. So, hey, I guess we have some news. Um, this kind of ties back to a fun with numbers we had a while back talking about, we were talking about the effects of uh, citrus greening on, uh, you know, the the uh, citrus market here in the United States. But I guess we have some more or less positive news to share on this front. So I'll start out with you and then I can add a few pointers as we go. So Sounds good because I usually have <laughs> the, the bummer news of the day, but I'm um, really happy to read this item. In fact, it's it's a hugely important one given the uh, the scope and um, damage, quite frankly, that citrus greening has had on the Florida um, citrus industry. Um, so this um, press release came out August 24th, uh, USDA's Agricultural Research uh, Service. Um, again, citrus greening has pretty much devastated Florida's um, citrus production, which is down by 75% um, in re re recent years. And um, <clears throat> excuse me, actually citrus green is, is even making its way uh, westward. So now Louisiana, Texas, and California, which were able to somewhat um, offset the fall in citrus production, um, it's, uh, it's made its way there as well. So um, just a real quick background on what is citrus greening. It's um, spread by a tiny sap sucking insect and um, uh, that carries a, a bacteria that impacts the, the tree. And uh, once the tree is affected, um, there's nothing that can do to, uh, that they can do to bring, bring it back. So um, spraying pesticides, cloaking trees in tents, steaming them to eradicate the bugs, really nothing has worked thus far. However, um, the Agricultural Research Service um, Crop Improvement and Genetics Research CIGR unit in Albany, California has um, found a way to augment the tree's natural resistance to pathogens, according to James Thompson, a geneticist um, at the CIGR. So um, just the real quick way, um, uh, an overview of what they're doing. They're um, delivering genes um, uh, via ag agrobacteria. So what is agrobacteria? It's a microbe that originated in soil, but has been turned into a plant engineering tool. Essentially, you clone the DNA of interest, in this case, uh, from the plants that have a natural resistance to the, path the pathogen, and add it to the agrobacteria, then the agrobacteria adds that specific bit of DNA to the genome. So um, what they're doing now is um, they're going to uh, transfer this knowledge and this technology to tree nurseries where the growers will be able to purchase the trees they need when they need them. The result would have at least a threefold economic benefit. One, the growers will get disease-free trees to farm 
nurseries will see increased profits and consumers will have a larger and potentially cheaper supply of citrus products, according to Thompson. And he says that this H, uh, the citrus greening um, fighting technology will be deployed in the next several years. So um, that's a huge development and it's important, I think, not only for what it means for the citrus production and the citrus um, industry here in the US, but certainly this technology was really interesting when I read it, it's like, wow, um, this type of thing, you know, this um, using agrobacteria, um, you know, there are countless ways, right? There's always, we're always fighting uh, pests and, and disease um, in a number of crops. So I thought this was great. So happy to deliver this very good news. <laughs> yeah, and I think it's the same item I ran across as well, because it mentioned that this the agrobacteria, you, the bacteria can be applied to the tree, and it doesn't have to be injected into the tree's vascular system. So the report I saw said that, you know, up until now, younger trees, because of how delicate they are, they you can't really put anything in their vascular system to try to combat citrus greening. So this this process does allow for that. And um, based on some of the trial results I was reading about, I mean, when these uh, treatments have been applied to trees, the uh, the yields improve above 30% even if they have citrus greening. So again, you know, not not there quite yet, but, um, yep. you know, finally a little hope on the horizon for our friends down in uh, in Florida in particular and across the uh, industry with citrus. And I know, again, not really the row crop market we target most of the time, but then again, you know, we have several Crop Life 100 retailers in places like California and Florida that most certainly are are dealing with citrus greening with some of their customer base. So again, yeah. there's some hope. So uh, yeah, keep, keep the faith, guys. Hopefully, you know, science science can can solve some of these problems. So hopefully this will be another one of those cases. So indeed. Good news. Yeah. So I guess you also said you had something to share regarding the railroads. Uh, I hope I I hope this also is in the category of good news, please. Um, well, it's not. So should I just skip it or? <laughs> no, no, no. We teased it. You got to You got to share it with the viewers now. So, OK, Debbie uh, Downer, bring us down. What's going on with the railroads now that we don't or aren't going to like? Well, the way I look at it in business, one of my favorite sayings is every business threat is an opportunity. And and likewise, um, uh, you know, not to mention, you know, me, I'm always focused on transportation, supply chain news items. And because, um, you know, we rely so much on rail as part of our uh, many modes of transportation, uh, this one stood out for me. Um, so this is reporting from Progressive Railroading, and um, they're reporting that in a September 8th letter to Union Pacific, um, the Federal Railroad Administrator, Amit Bose, um, said he has serious concern about the safety of uh, UP's rolling stock. Um, quote, the compliance of the rolling stock, and that includes freight cars and locomotives on the UP network is poor and UP was unwilling or unable to take steps to improve the condition of their equipment. Um, this is what um, the regulator uh, both wrote to U UP's um, CEO, uh, executive, VP and president. So um, it raises the concern. And again, this, you know, I think, um, you know, with the class ones, we've seen, you know, kind of in a response to, to COVID, there were some layoffs. There's, um, you know, a move to adopt um, greater adoption of, preci of precision rail railroading. Um, so, and, you know, we've seen um, some um, significant uh, disruptions with rail, not to mention, um, you know, accidents and hazmat related things. So um, just scanning through this news news item, um, kind of putting them on notice. But um, again, we know that they're that, you know, we rely, uh, especially our, our crop life audience relies um, quite a lot on rail. So I just wanted to throw this little new news item in. I, I think it's good. Ultimately, I think just, you know, keeping people <laughs> on their toes, our providers on their toes, like, hey, look, you know, and, and calling out, out these things. So that's the 
news from the Debbie Downer desk this morning. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, as everything here at uh, Crop Life Retail Week, we'll keep an eye on this and uh, see what develops as we move forward over the upcoming weeks and months. We will for sure. All right. Well, Miss Laura, time for your favorite segment of the show and hopefully a chance at redemption. Time for Fun with Numbers. Yeah, it better be fun because I'll tell you, I don't think I, I can't remember the last time I got something right. <laughs> it, it has it has I'm been getting... a little while. So I'm hoping, I'm hoping this week will be a little easier for you. So pay attention. Okay, I'm ready. So this week, your number is 94%. Okay. All right. So is 94%. Is that a the reduction in chemical usage in cotton since 1999. Is it B, the percentage of the U.S. citrus crop currently affected by citrus greening? Is it C, the average percentage of Crop Life 100, 100 forms returned each year? <laughs> or is it D, the percentage of time I've spent, quote unquote, out of office since July 24th? Uh, let's go with B. Mm, no, I am sorry. <laughs> no, you know, I, I know citrus green is a big deal, but I believe last I saw the number was in the 70s, low 80% range, not 94. Uh, no, the correct answer is A. This was your buddy Rob Clayton again from Nutrien. He mentioned the fact that you know, since he started in agriculture back in 1999, that in cotton in particular, uh, they, because of genetics and better seed varieties and other techniques that are now being employed by cotton growers, that there has been a 94% reduction in chemical usage over the last 24 years. So I'm laughing because I think he did mention that. <laughs> no excuse for me missing that one, but. No, um, that's all right. I did. I did fool you by asking a question about something we talked about. I usually don't do that, but all right. Well, that's all right. We're redemption will done. have to wait for another week, Miss Laura. Sorry. <laughs> that's all right. I'll show up again with my women at Ag Tech cap and see what happens. <laughs> yeah. Well, before and before we go, I will tease the fact that this week, uh, you know, I attended the uh, CPDA Crop Life America annual meetings uh, in Nashville. So in next week's video, I will have some highlights from what was said during those two events and who said what and what trends were and what people were talking about. And, and again, if you wanted to check out a, a story regarding Crop Life uh, and, uh, America's 90th anniversary. That's in our September issue, which I know hit my mailbox the other day. So it should be in your mailbox as well. And also was posted online. So check that out for yourselves. All right, Miss Laura. Well, that's it for another edition of Crop Life Retail Week. Thank you viewers for joining us on behalf of myself, Laura, and everyone at Crop Life. We hope you have a great week and we'll talk again real soon. If you have questions or comments about today's episode of Retail Week, contact us by email or Twitter or type your message in the comment section below. Your feedback is important to us. We will try our best to address your thoughts in next week's episode and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel.